Nico Manuro is invited into Hisako's circle of trust to find out who or what is behind the shadow. Their introduction leads to the discovery of a cult and the formation of a new team. We're going to talk about it right here in our review of Ultimate X-Men number 5 from Marvel Comics. See you in 3. Peach Momoko's manga-inspired take on the X-Men is probably the furthest away from Earth 616 than any other Ultimus title. That distance isn't doing the title any favors, but traditional Marvel readers who also enjoy manga have much to like in this series because it feels very much like a traditional manga title. However, readers put off by The Great Divide may find that this issue brings the Ultimate X-Men a little bit closer to home. When last we left Hisako and May in Ultimate X-Men number 4, Hisako was confronted by a fellow student about the increasing number of deaths of people that had anything to do with Subasa's suicide. The issue concluded with the Shadow possessing the student and forcing him to commit suicide right in front of Hisako. To protect herself from attack, Hisako turned into armor in full view of the public. May fried any nearby smartphones to prevent videos of the incident from getting out, but the whole event was filmed and distributed by a girl on a nearby balcony who apparently has control over electricity, who we now know is Surge. That brings us to Ultimate X-Men number 5. We begin with a quiet meeting between Surge and the boy who appears to be creating and controlling the shadow. We now know his name is Shinobu Kageyama. They discuss the video of armor that Surge released to the world and their friendship appears somewhat contentious. Surge suspects Kageyama is responsible for Hisako's troubles, but he claims he has nothing to do with her. Up to now, the story has focused entirely on Hisako and her friends. Here we get to see what could be the villainous side of the story, and we finally get a name for the face, which is Shinobu Kageyama. Who is that? I have no idea. There isn't any prominent character in Marvel by that name, which is a departure from the rest of Momoko's characters in the series. Generally, the scene is extremely helpful in humanizing Hisako's antagonists so that the reader has somebody to connect with. The shadow is creepy and sure and dangerous and all these other things, but it's kind of too amorphous and vague to be much more than a dangerous undirected force, so you really have nothing to connect with. This scene helps correct that gap. The story moves to Hisako's room where she and Mei have invited Nico to come over to help them with her psychic powers to figure out what's happening. Hisako offers her omomori, hoping Nico can sense where it came from and who gave it to her. Nico focuses on the totem to divine its origins, and then suddenly a shadow emerges from the omomori. Nico splats the shadow with her book, but the shadow tries to push its way free. Nico instinctively grabs her magnifying glass, which she turns into a large staff, similar to the one that you would expect to her to have from her time on the runaways in Earth 616 and disperses the shadow permanently. Nico's confrontation with the shadow is the meat and potatoes of this issue as Hisako now has allies who have seen the shadow for themselves, and Nico's power suddenly emerges in a way she never suspected. And all, this is one of the better paced scenes and one of the better paced issues in this run so far. And it gives you a, kind of a, that sense that, okay, now we're starting to move and now things are happening. Elsewhere, we catch up with Surge as she's sitting in an older man's apartment. The man is interested in a kind of a skeezy, pervy way on the scar on her thigh, which looks like uh, the crackles and the streaks from electricity. When he reaches for her thigh to touch it, Surge grabs him by the head and fries his brain with electricity. Surge then empties the man's wallet before leaving the apartment and the dead body just smoking in the middle of the room. Surge's intentions in the previous issue were a little unclear because we only saw her briefly, but here we see she's A, a possible sex worker, and B, has no hesitation about killing people to get what she wants. In this way, Peach Momoko is painting Surge as a callous killer and a villain, which is a pretty big departure from the way she's presented as a hero in Earth 616. Later, May and Nico walk home from Hisako's house and discuss the confrontation with the Shadow. Nico is a parent wealth of information about people who she calls mutants, and she explains that her grandmother researched rumors of a secret cult of mutants who believe they are superior to humanity. Nico believes the person behind the shadow may be a member of this cult of mutants and that they should prepare to fight for whatever they are planning next. At the end of the conversation, May receives a flash of inspiration at the prospect of her, Nico, and Hisako having to fight a cult full of mutants like them. They should form a team. And guess what they want to call the team? The X-Men. Yeah, you, you heard that right. This slow-paced manga suddenly picks up speed, dumps a whole lot of exposition on you, and forms a team called the X-Men out of nowhere. On the one hand, picking up the pace is good. It's a step in the right direction. On the other hand, shifting from a horror manga to the formation of the world's greatest superhero team in the span of just a couple pages feels super rushed and forced. So, final thoughts. What do we think about Ultimate X-Men number 5? Picks up the pace. 
begins drawing the battle lines between the potential heroes and potential villains, and it brings the title a little bit closer to something that loosely resembles an X-Men book. On the one hand, a higher pace and clear movement is a big step in the right direction for a title that's been treading a lot of water almost since issue number one. On the other hand, the leap from horror manga to forming an X-Men team comes really out of nowhere, and it feels both rushed and forced. Therefore, in giving Ultimate X-Men number 5 from Marvel Comics a 6 out of 10. Overall, this is a better issue, but Momoko rushes through the explanation of mutants, rushes through the possibility of a villain cult, and rushes through the inspiration to form the X-Men out of thin air, which means the pacing of the plot is way off. But you know what? What do you think? I want to know your opinion on this. Are you an X-Men fan in general? Leave us a thumbs up if you are. Also, leave a comment down below to tell us where you would rank this title among all the ultimate titles that have come out so far. And remember to click on the link in the description to read the written review and buy this comic if you so choose. Thank you very much for joining, and please stay tuned through the outro for the next review.